G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. It is mock draft time. I've been doing these about once a month and now we are about five or six weeks, no, four weeks, I think, away from the 2024 national draft. So I'm sure we'll get a few in between now and then. But this is the first mock draft I'm gonna be doing with a new drafter. Obviously it all got shaken up in the trade period, lots of different selections moving in different directions. And I'm also gonna extend this video to 30 picks. I thought about 40, I just don't know if my draft knowledge is deep enough yet. So we're gonna do the top 30 selections and I am gonna include a couple of mock trades that can either be done live or up until about 10 days before the draft. So I've incorporated a couple. I did a video earlier this week where I speculated on some potential pick swaps we could see and live trades. And I removed a couple because they're probably just not likely enough. And I amended one or two others. So I'm gonna go with two mock trades to go into it. And I'm not gonna incorporate live trades because it's getting a little bit tricky there. So to begin with, I am gonna go through what my two trades are. And then we're gonna move through player by player for the first 30 selections. Before I get into it, thank you once again to everyone who has jumped on board and subscribed to this channel. This has been the biggest eight week period of growth this channel has ever seen. So I wanna thank you very much. And if there's anyone watching here who hasn't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you did. My new goal is to hit 33,000 by the national draft. So to begin with, I'm gonna run through exactly what my mock trades are. So I speculated around North and Richmond doing a deal for pick two, and I wanted to do that deal before this mock draft because I feel like it's gonna have a huge impact. And I do also think it's very likely North Melbourne don't go into this draft holding pick two. I think their motivations for getting multiple picks in the first round of this year's draft with their need for talls and uh, probably a distinct lack of need for a top end midfielder. I think they'll be motivated to trade down. Equally, Richmond would have some interest in trading up for pick two to get a couple of the top midfielders in this draft. They've been linked to several and I'll go through that. So I did a mock trade of six and 18 for pick two in my previous video and I'm gonna amend that. Now, I, I don't know if I fully agree with those saying that it should be pick two for six and 11. I just don't think there's enough in there for Richmond. However, I did see a great suggestion by someone called Wayno in my comment section. So shout out to you, Wayno. I'm gonna run with this one. This is a ballsy one and I like it. So let's go with North trade pick two and a few future first to Richmond for pick six, 10 and 11. So that, that is a very different look on the first round suddenly. If North Melbourne hold three picks in that 11, it gives them great access to at least a couple of talls, I'd imagine. It will cost them their future first, but I think with the strength of this draft and the need for talls, I can see North Melbourne being keen on this. And we'll wait and see what players I select for them before you totally hate it, but it's expensive and it's bold, but I think there's enough in there for North Melbourne to do this deal. For Richmond, I said previously, I think they've got eight picks in the top 24. And if I were them, I would probably condemn that down to six through a combination of trading into the future or live trades or condensing picks into higher ones. And so this one kind of gets that done for them in one fell swoop. They'll hold the top two selections in this year's draft, but further to that, they could potentially hold the first two picks in next year's draft. I do think there's something to be said for Richmond spreading out their assets over a couple of years. And I think this ticks boxes for both teams. So what I want to, this is a great suggestion. I'm running with it. North and Richmond fans, let me know in the comments if you hate it. The other deal I'm going to stick with is Sydney trading up with GWS. Now this hasn't been reported on at all, but we know Sydney have been interested in trading 19 and 22 up for an earlier pick in this year's draft. Now, in my other video, I went through the fact that teams with picks in the early teens, where Sydney's presumably trying to get into, West Coast, Fremantle, Port Adelaide, all those teams I think are gonna be more likely to not trade down. GWS is one exception to that, however. So I've gone with Sydney trade 19 and 22 for pick 15 in this year's draft and 37 going back to Sydney. So with that all being said, let's get into this mock draft. Just a heads up guys, this video is brought to you in a paid partnership with BetterHelp. Personally, I think the ability to talk to someone about what's going on inside your head may be the most underrated tool we have. Personally for me, I think one of the biggest benefits I get from verbalizing what's going on inside my head is that sometimes like thoughts or concerns that you have deep inside your mind kind of exist as these nebulous subconscious feelings. But when you actually say them out loud, when you actually have to articulate them into a sentence, there's plenty of times where I've found that that thought or concern that I had probably didn't actually make a lot of sense or was perhaps really irrational. And I didn't realize that until I had to formulate a sentence. So that's why I wanted to introduce today's paid partner, BetterHelp, because they're a platform that matches people with credentialed therapists who are trained to listen. The good thing about therapy is that it's a safe space. You know, there's no real fear of judgment. You get guarded help from an expert, an actual mental health trained professional. 
And I think people these days are really catching on to this idea that you don't need to be diagnosed with something like depression or anxiety to necessarily get a benefit from therapy. So if you wanna get started in this process, you can go to the link in the description of this video, or you can simply go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. From there, you fill out a questionnaire, which helps them assess your specific needs. So it's easy to start and it's easy once you've started the process as well, because if you find a therapist that you perhaps don't feel like is the right fit for you, you can switch to another one at no additional cost. So if you're someone who thinks you could benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp, like I said, link in the description, or you can simply go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy, and that will get you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. Thanks guys, let's get back to the video. So we've got Richmond on the board with the first two selections. I don't really know who's gonna go pick one yet. However, I'm gonna pick the guy that I think should go pick one, and that is Sam Lawler from Vic Country. Now he is possibly the midfielder at the top end with the most upside in my opinion. So he's powerfully built, he's a good, strong contested mark. He's a good clearance winning midfielder and he lays a lot of tackles. I think he's fairly well-rounded and the upside with him as well is that I think he played cricket quite seriously up until recently. So there's still some development that's implied with that. And I think he may not actually go pick one on the night, but I think he ends up at Richmond that's reportedly keen on him. So who do Richmond pair with him? I probably would consider either Jagger Smith or Finn O'Sullivan and I've decided to go with Finn O'Sullivan. So to clarify, I had Finn falling down my draft order. I think the last time I did this, and that was because this year, his top age year, he hasn't really performed to the same standard as you know people were forecasting at the start of the year, but he has been playing through injury. Now, reading things online, there seems to be no suggestion that he is actually gonna fall down the draft order. So I'm going to go back on that. And Richmond do really like him. And if that's the case, I'm gonna say they pick Finn O'Sullivan, a very high IQ midfielder over Jagger Smith. So Carlton, who have been heavily linked to Finn O'Sullivan, now have to choose a different player. Now, I do think they'll probably bid on Levi Ashcroft here. Levi could get bid on at pick one. I don't really know. It's not super material to this draft. On talent, he'll get bid on at pick one. They might want Brisbane to pay more in a, in a potential match bid, but I don't think it's really going to matter. So let's just say Levi Ashcroft, selection three to the Brisbane Lions. And that leaves Carlton with Jagger Smith, a very high volume, high production midfielder. I'm sure they'd love Finn, but Jagger is the next best available and being a local boy as well. I'm sure they consider Sid Draper, but on evenly rated talents, let's say they stick with the homegrown talent. And Adelaide at pick five into the draft, and this is such a layup here, and it feels almost boring and basic to say they'll just take Sid Draper, but that's who I'm gonna go with. Again, he's a safe bet midfielder, good talent, sort of Sarong-esque in being that sort of small contested sort of player, but who is really consistent. And while I think in the champs, he wasn't playing his best footy, like Finn O'Sullivan, was playing through a bit of an injury cloud, but at the end of the year in the sandful, played really well. And again, on the logic that if you've got evenly rated midfield talents around this range, go with the local talent. So I'll say Sid Draper gets there. So now we've got Melbourne's first pick, and this will potentially shape the rest of the top 15, I reckon. And at least I, I tried several different permutations here. What would Melbourne likely to select? Well, they, they could go for the best available midfielder. And the two that come to mind are Smiley and Langford. But Melbourne, I reckon, like to buck the trend and they tend to pick their own guys. And I remember last year with Windsor and Tholstrip, until those players were linked to Melbourne, I don't think either were considered to go that high. Now, Windsor looked like a great selection. It's not a drive-by at all. But I think Melbourne might go for a little high risk, high reward here and go Alexander Toru. This guy has bolted out of nowhere. He's a bit of an undersized intercepting defender, but he's shown a bit of versatility to play in other parts of the ground as well. I think I read on the age that they said he's been playing as a defensive midfielder sometimes. I don't see a reason why Melbourne wouldn't go tall with this selection. There's also Harry Armstrong to consider. They do need obviously someone to come in behind when May and Lever move on. Toru is a high risk, high reward talent. And it seems like a Melbourne sort of pick. So let me know what you think about that. He does seem to be rated as high as top five by some recruiters. That leaves North Melbourne to enter the draft at the first pick. And again, this one is probably a little bit cliche or predictable, but I'll say Harry Armstrong here. I could see them going for Toru if he's available here, but in this case, he's not. So they'll go with a key forward who I think they do need uh, particularly in this draft, it's time to draft one. Harry Armstrong is the highest rated one. It's not a foregone conclusion that they t end up with Armstrong here, but I think it makes sense for certainly the way this draft is going that I'm mapping out here. Let's go with a double bid here from St Kilda. They got two picks in a row, but let's get Leonardo Lombard and Isaac Kako out of the way. This is about Lombard's range, I think, and Kako as well. I've seen it suggested that St Kilda were a chance to bid on him before Essendon traded away pick nine. So ironically, Essendon take him with pick nine and Lombard goes to the Gold Coast Suns. So we're at another interesting point of the draft here for me. St Kilda have two picks in a row and trying to guess what they're gonna do is a little bit tricky. 
They could go two midfielders. They could pick a tall. I'm advised by Saints fans they really need midfielders. So let's say at least one of those selections is midfield. Now, the two best left are Smiley and Langford. But do St. Kilda take both of them? I think as tall, big-bodied inside mids, they're not exactly the same player. But there is enough similarity there where I'm not sure St. Kilda would pick two of the same style player. So let's say they take one midfielder. And in my opinion, I think it should be Harvey Langford. So I'll go Harvey Langford to the Saints here. I've seen him in some mock drafts fall a little bit later than this. And it could be Josh Smiley for sure. But I don't think they'll take both. And so I'll go Langford. I'm not too sure if he'll slide because there's an expectation that he won't necessarily test well in the draft combine because he's not super athletic. But he's a good footballer and was joint luck medalist with Lombard. So St. Kilda need to differentiate with their second pick. I don't think they'll go Smiley. They could. They could. Saints fans, let me know if you disagree with me. But I'm going to go look for a little bit more of a left field one who adds something different to the talents they've already got. So maybe Toby Trevalier gets picked up here by the Saints. Again, this is one that maybe this is a few selections earlier than others are expecting him to go. But in these circumstances, I don't think Saints go for two similar midfielders. Trevalia, look, he's a, he's a good running defender, potential to play midfield and a bit of wing. There's some run and carry there, good skills, good defender as well. Um, he is different enough to Wangani Miller there, where I think they could form a, a very good defensive one-two punch. So the Ds are back on the board with their second selection. And once again, maybe we go a little left field here. Josh Smiley's still on the board. It would make sense. But Cal Toomey seems to think the Ds are hot on Bo Allen, and I reckon that's where he goes. He's the West Australian under-18s captain and a bit of a midfielder utility, still sort of learning midfield craft, but has played some good games there. He's quick, he's a great athlete, and again, it's left field enough for me to like it as a Melbourne selection. They are reportedly keen on him, and they've only got really these two selections. There is some form for as well for Melbourne picking from WA and reaching for the guys that they like. And Bo Allen at 12 is not a massive reach, but I'm justifying why he goes over Josh Smiley. But last year, you know, Tholstrup was picked earlier than anyone really thought he was going to go. And Melbourne do recruit out of WA a fair bit. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to continue to draft out of WA, but sometimes you pick up on trends where certain clubs, I want to say Richmond, Sydney, and Brisbane, and other clubs that I can think of that don't mind drafting out of WA. And Melbourne in the past, obviously, there was Jackson, there was Rivers. More recently, there was Tholstrup, there's Van Royen, there's Judd McVie. So it suggests there's a strong scouting network in Western Australia. So that all adds up to Bo Allen joining the Ds at Big 12. Now we've got North two selections and this is going to be interesting to see what they do. So I don't think they need Josh Smiley, but he is different enough to what they've already got, add some support to, to George Wardlaw. So I think I'm gonna go with that selection here. I also did consider Joe Berry. Stylistically, he adds something that they'd lack, but so does Josh Smiley. So this is a tough one for me. I really did think about Joe Berry, but he's a 194 centimeter midfielder who was considered a pick one candidate at the start of the year. Didn't have the best champs from all reports. And again, different enough for North Melbourne. I did say they don't necessarily need to go midfield, but now they've got three first round selections. They've picked their key forward. It opens the door up a little bit here. So in their next selection, I also wanted to go Joe Berry, but this is where I'll probably go Luke Trainer. I'm not convinced he necessarily goes this early, but there is a North Melbourne connection there. Positionally, he does add something different to them. He's not a true key back, but he's a little bit more like Ridley and has great skills and intercepting power as well. Bit of a concussion question mark. Fingers crossed he's okay. But all things being equal, I think trying to here to join Armstrong and Smiley is a great draft haul for North Melbourne. So now we're up to West Coast and typically a lot of the guys I like for West Coast pick are gone. So I'm going to go with the player that I think is the next best suited in Xavier Lindsay. A bit more of an outside damaging sort of player and I think that sort of suits West Coast needs at the moment. They have a lot of needs but I think outside polish and class does suit the Eagles. And to be honest it's, it's difficult to find any other suitable player around this range who's still left on the board that makes more sense than Lindsay. So this might not be the first time I've had Lindsay to the Eagles, but in this scenario, the way it's playing out, I think it makes sense. Now we've got Port Adelaide, and this is the first time I've had them have a first round in a phantom draft for probably years. They, they haven't had one since 2021. So who do they go with this first selection? I like Joe Berry for Port Adelaide here. Sure, they just recruited Joe Richards, who is a smaller forward, but Joe Berry is a little bit more than that. He's more like a smallish high half forward that can damage you up the ground, play on the wing, play on half back. His goal now is good. His intensity is great. I think he could be one of the first players next year to really make an impact, especially if he goes into a side like Port Adelaide that will be relatively successful. So 
put Adelaide get Joe Berry? Is it a strict need? No, but I do think there's a lot more than meets the eye, I suppose, with Joe Berry, or at least more than on paper stats would suggest. Now we have Fremantle selection at 17. And um, again, I, they don't really have a whole lot of needs. So this might be a best available talent here. What about Ollie Hannaford? This guy has bolted quite a lot. He's a small forward. Um, well, I think he was a midfielder that sort of learned forward craft and has proven himself to be very good in that role. He's a bit undersized at 180 centimeters. Fremantle lost Lockie Schultz. They bring in Shea Bolton. Ollie Hannaford is probably different enough where it's not necessarily a clear cut thing where they don't need an Ollie Hannaford because they have Shea Bolton. I think on talent, this is about right for Fremantle, and I don't think they shy away from picking best available talent. So we're up to the next trade-affected uh, pick in this draft. So this originally belongs to GWS, but Sydney have traded up. So what do they do with their selection? Well, they've got Joel Cochran a little bit later in this draft as an academy bid, so maybe a key back or a tall defender is not necessarily high on the list here. Do they go for a key forward? I think possibly, considering nothing else really jumps out at me. So if we go best available key forward, Job Shanahan makes sense. He's 194 centimeters. Played for the Allies, but also played for Bendigo. So I'm not sure geographically exactly where he's from, but perhaps this is an opportunity in a, in a draft laden with talls. Where well, Sydney clearly have their eye on someone. So perhaps it's a tall, it's a strong draft. Job Shanahan on value, I think is a good selection for Sydney. I'm sure they're hoping Amadi and McDonald form a very good dynamic one-two punch, but perhaps just someone behind them also makes sense. Now, up to the Giants. They've got four selections here, and I do think GWS could trade one of these live, but it's a little bit too hard to envisage how that gets done, so I'm going to leave it as is for now. They took Gothard, and they took Leek in last year's draft, and I think they could look at midfield, and that's probably where I'd start with GWS. They've got Callahan and Green, who are fairly young and talented, but outside of that, they probably want to bolster that generation. They've got Rouston as well, but you know, a lot of their best midfielders are on the older side, so I'd say they'll replenish the midfielders with Tom Gross, a 181 centimeter inside mid. It's really hard to pick who GWS are gonna like. I feel like Phoenix Gold out at 12 was completely unpredictable last year and Gross might actually go a little bit later than this on talent, but he's probably the best available midfielder who is a proven midfielder at this stage. So then we've got the Western Bulldogs and they've got a slider here in Taj Hotton. I think on talent, this guy should go a lot earlier, but he has done an ACL this year. And this is just the way things have fallen in the particular way I've done this draft. Could he be an option for North Melbourne at 14 if they prefer Hotton to Smiley? I'm not too sure, possibly. You could possibly make the case for that, but let's go with Taj Hotton here. I think this guy will prove to be a very talented midfielder. He was a forward midfielder Fielder convert, so he was a forward, has some goal in house, um, has proven an ability to get up the ground and accumulate the footy as that sort of high half forward too. So I think that's a great combo. The Bulldogs took Sanders last year. They've got a whole heap of talls. I don't think they need to look tall. So I think they'll look for the best player from Victoria in this range. So Richmond have their top two midfielders and they've got four picks in the 20s now. So mapping out their strategy here will be interesting. I reckon they go tall with this selection. So let's go Jack Whitlock, a 200 centimeter key forward from Victoria who has slid a little bit from about six months ago. I want to say he was talked about as a top 10 selection, but he joins this sort of glut of available talls in the twenties. And I think Richmond will pick him and possibly have a view to joining him with his brother, but we'll see how that maps out. GWS are back on the clock. And this is where a bid for Sam Marshall comes in. Again, this is completely arbitrary. Would GWS be more likely to bid on him because he's not Victorian? Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Let's just say Sam Marshall, another academy player to join Levi Ashcroft at the Brisbane Lions. Bit more outside from what I can tell, 185 centimeters. Brisbane have already smashed this draft. So we got GWS back on the clock. And again, it's hard to envisage what they're gonna do. It always is, it really is. And you know, you look at the mix of players they've brought in. So I've given them an inside mid. They got a small forward last year and a running defender. Would it make sense for them to get at least one tall from this range? Could they go for another key forward? I'd say John T4 could be an option for them here. Possibly the next highest rated key forward out of Victoria here. And look, they've got Hogan, they've got Cadman, they just added Stringer, there's Riccardi there. So there's a little bit of a log jam, but perhaps they just look at like three years from now when Fall's like 21 or whoever they pick. He can backfill some of the older guys in that team right now with Hogan being 30. So now we've got Richmond and look, they could continue to go tall, but they've got two later picks in the 20s here. So I think they go best available. A big slider in Murphy Reed. Now Murphy Reed had a great chance and is a pretty well performed smaller midfield, about a 180 centimeters and uh, accumulates the footy, has no production issues at all, hits the scoreboard, so he's got some craft. But I read a mock draft that the age did 
where they actually consulted recruiters and then came up with their own ranking. And they suggested that there's a bit of a belief that Murphy might be a little bit small and slow to be a true midfielder at the next level, which is why he's not considered top 10 like I've previously had him. So I've got him sliding, but he is a talented footballer and stylistically offsets what they've already added in Sam Lawler and Finn O'Sullivan and their key forward in Jack Whitlock. I think this gives him a nice blend and on talent, he's best available. So we've got GWS with two more selections. I Again, I think they're a great candidate to trade into the future. Would Essendon do it? Well, Essendon fans didn't particularly like my mock trade in the last video I did. Another one that comes to mind is West Coast. But again, I didn't want to just shoehorn my own football club into here. <laughs> To be honest, it's too hard to tell, but let's say GWS have these two selections. I'll say they add another midfielder, this time Cooper Hines, which might be a bit of a bargain here at pick 25. A bit more of an explosive athlete. Six foot three, he's about 190 centimeters. Got a fair bit of potential, does Cooper Hines, but not as much of a safe bet. Otherwise, he'd go a little bit earlier. But again, differentiates from Tom Gross and adds another midfielder to their young GWS team. So then next best available, I like Harrison Oliver quite a lot as a smaller defender. Small defenders don't tend to go in the top 30 of drafts, but this is where he's pretty unanimously rated. And he does have a nice mix of being both defensively oriented and has some offensive weapons as well. He's got good skills. So again, I think that adds a nice blend to GWS's mix over the last two years. Now we've got Richmond doubling up, and this is a great opportunity for them to go tall again with both picks. So I'm gonna take the best Ruckman in the draft in Alex Dodson. Again, this is just rounding out you know, the whole blend of talents. They've got two genuine midfielders. They've got a key forward. They've got a smaller midfielder forward as well. Let's take the best Ruck in the draft, followed by Matt Whitlock to join his twin brother, as a 199 centimeter key position player. Like he started as a key back, spent a bit of time forward as well, but I'd imagine they maybe draft him as a key position defender. What happens next is harder to tell, but that gives Richmond three genuine talls in different positions. It gives them two genuine inside mids and it gets them a smaller midfielder forward that is right there on talent. They also go into next year's draft holding potentially picks one and two, or at least let's call it two top five picks. Rounding out this draft, we've got the Western Bulldogs taking perhaps Christian Moraes. He has slid down the order a little bit as an outside midfielder, about 183 centimeters, adds a lot of run and carry. His ball use is a little bit suspect. Nonetheless, I mean, the Western Bulldogs set out to draft a number of outside mids last year and the elephant in the room as well, Aiden O'Driscoll, one of their selections, unfortunately had to retire due to concussion. So they've picked up Hotton and Moraes, I think, adds another option on the outside there for the Western Bulldogs. And on talent, this is about right. And finally, we've got the West Coast Eagles. Again, this is probably, as a fan, something I'd love to see us go tall with. But at this current stage of time, I'm not too sure, possibly out of ignorance, if there's any good key backs around this range. So they'll go homegrown talent and take Hamish Davis, who's another bolter in this year's draft. Some have him earlier than this, some have him later than this, so I'm not too sure if this is reasonable, but the end of his year was great, and he kicked four goals and had 21 possessions in a final in the men's league team. He's 190 centimeters, more of a forward who can run through the middle, but he's shown an ability to both hit the scoreboard and win plenty of the footy. So we'll wait and see on Hamish Davis. He could go earlier than this, I'm not sure. But that rounds out my top 30, guys. Let me know in the comments what you agree with or disagree with, especially what you think about the mock trade. I personally love it. I think it's great for both teams between North Melbourne and Richmond there. I will continue to do more mock drafts more often between now and the 2024 draft, which I think happens November 20th or 21st. I should have double checked that. But for now, thanks for watching. Thanks for being subscribed. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Cheers.